So the question is to implement a producer consumer pattern. In this pattern, we have one or more producers who will produce some kind of items or objects. They will be placed in some storage area and there'll be one or more consumers who will get the items out of the storage and process them. If there are no items in the storage area, the consumers will have to wait. And then whenever the producer adds that item, the consumer can then proceed. Similarly, on the other side, if a producer is trying to add an item and the storage is full, there, are, there is no space to add more items, then the producer waits for a consumer to take an item out of the storage. Now some space is available in the storage and then the producer can proceed to add its item. So basically what we want is a simple queue of a fixed capacity. We can have multiple producer threads which will keep on adding items to that queue. We will have multiple consumer threads who will get the items out of the queue. If the queue is full, the producer thread needs to go into the wait state. And similarly, if the queue is empty, then there is nothing to consume and the consumer thread should go into the wait state. Now this functionality looks complicated, but it's very easy to implement. All we have to do is use a blocking queue. So Java provides a blocking queue. We can give it a fixed size. In this case, the size is 10. And this blocking queue is a thread safe data structure. That means multiple producers and multiple consumers can access this queue simultaneously without any issues. So in this case, we have a runnable for a producer, which in an infinite loop will keep adding new items to the queue. We're using this runnable to start two new producer threads. And then we have a runnable for a consumer, which will do the opposite, which is in an infinite loop, it will take the items out of the queue and it will process that item. You're using that runnable to start two new consumer threads. And the blocking queue, as name suggests, also implements the blocking operations. So if a producer thread tries to add an item and the queue is full, it will make the producer thread block here. Similarly, if the consumer thread tries to take an item from an empty queue, then the consumer thread blocks here. So we do not have to do anything special in our code to implement the blocking. So that's why this simple code implements the entire pattern of a producer consumer. And that's the reason interviews do not ask us to just implement a producer consumer pattern. They typically add a constraint that implement this without using a blocking queue. Because with blocking queue, the code is very simple and straightforward. So basically what is being asked is to create a blocking queue on our own from scratch. So we have two options to do that. We can either use locks and conditions or we can use wait notify. Let's start with the first one, using locks and conditions to implement a blocking queue. So now we have a simple queue to store items. We have producer threads, we have consumer threads. Let's implement that. So we have this class of blocking queue and this generic type E is the type of item which will be stored in the blocking queue. So we'll create a simple queue and in the constructor we'll initialize it with a linked list. We can also use an array for this. You take the maximum size of the queue in the constructor and you set it in a variable. And we have two simple methods. We have a put method, which will add to the queue. We have a take method, which will remove from the queue and return it. Since there are going to be multiple threads trying to access the same queue, we need to protect it from the simultaneous access. And the easiest way to do is to just introduce a lock. So any thread which wants to access the queue first needs to acquire a lock, access the queue, then release the lock. So we'll update our code which we wrote initially. So in our put method, we'll surround our queue.add with acquiring the lock and releasing the lock. Similarly, for the take, we'll surround our queue.remove operation with acquiring the lock and releasing the lock. And this lock is of type reentrant lock. So still a straightforward code, nothing too complicated. Now let's focus on these two methods, put and take. We had this one more feature where if the size of the queue is full, we have to block the thread in the put operation. And similarly in the take operation, if the size of the queue is zero, we have to block the thread. So let's add the code for that. 
So this is the same code from the last slide. It just so locks in Java come with this functionality of conditions. So we can create two conditions. First condition is called not empty. Second condition is called not full. So in the put operation, we'll use the not full condition. So if the size of the queue is maximum, that means the queue is full, then you wait for this condition to be triggered. So this thread will wait for someone to say that the queue is not full anymore so that it can proceed and add its item. So it will say not full dot await. And in Java concurrency, as soon as you do the condition dot await, if the condition is not satisfied, the thread automatically releases the lock and goes into a wait state. Similarly, on the take, if the queue size is zero, that means there is nothing in the queue, we'll use the other condition, which is not empty, and we'll do a dot await on it. That means the consumer thread says, I'm waiting for someone to say that the queue is not empty so that I can proceed and take an item out of the queue. Same thing will happen to this. It will release the lock temporarily and will go into the wait state, waiting for this condition to be satisfied. Now both these threads, the producer as well as the consumer, are waiting for a certain condition. But who will trigger that condition? So here we have a consumer thread. It is waiting for this condition of not empty. As soon as producer adds an item to the queue, it knows that there is something in the queue now. So it can tell the consumer threads, it will send a signal to the consumer threads, I've added an item in the queue and it's not empty anymore. So this condition is satisfied, you can go further. Similarly, whenever a producer thread is waiting for the queue, which is full, the consumer thread can do the same. It will take an item out of the queue and it will send a signal to the producer thread. I've removed an item from the queue, so it's definitely not full anymore and you can proceed with your addition. So let's add that into our code. So here we are looking at the put operation. That is the producer. So whenever producer adds anything to the queue, it can tell the consumer, I've just added an item, so I'm sure that it's not empty anymore. So you can say not empty dot signal all. So this is signaling on that condition. It is signaling to all the threads who are waiting on this condition. And who is waiting on this condition? The consumer thread. On the other side, the consumer, after it has taken out an item from the queue, can signal all the threads who are waiting for this condition of not full. So the producer thread which was waiting on this condition because the queue was full, can be assured that the item has been just removed so the queue is not full anymore. So in both these cases, as soon as the signal is fired, the other thread can come out of the wait state, it will try to reacquire the lock and it can proceed to do its operations. We have a small problem though. Let's consider that the queue is currently empty and there are two threads. Both are waiting for this condition to be satisfied. A producer thread comes along with a single item and it adds that item to the queue. It sends a signal to all the threads waiting for the condition saying that I've just added an item so the queue is not empty anymore. So the, both these threads will come out of the waiting state, they'll become runnable again. So in terms of code, they'll continue at the next statement after the await condition. So both of these threads are at this point now. Notice that this entire code is within log.lock .lock and log.unlock. That means to execute any of the statements, the threads will need to acquire the lock. So only one thread can acquire the lock. Now let's say thread 2 acquires that lock. Thread 2 will proceed and get the item from the queue. It will return the item and it will release the lock. Now thread 1 can acquire the lock and it will also try to get the item from the queue. But thread 2 had already taken out the item from the queue and the queue is empty. So this thread will get a null from the queue. So what we ideally want is whenever both threads come out of this condition, they need to recheck the queue size. And instead of adding another if condition, which will also have similar problems, we can just replace our code with a while statement. So in our case, the thread 2 will check it again it will definitely find that the queue size is 1, so it will proceed further. But the thread 1, when it tries it again, 
it will find the queue size to be empty and it will again go into the wait state. So just replacing the if with a while will ensure the correctness of our program. And that is an entire code of implementing a blocking queue which enables us to implement the producer consumer. The other option which we discussed was instead of locks and conditions, we can use the wait and notify. Once you understand the locks and conditions, using wait and notify is even simpler. So wherever we have used the lock and unlock, we'll replace it with synchronized. And whenever we have the condition of not empty and not full, we'll replace it with simple objects. And any object in Java has these methods of wait, notify, and notify all. So we'll replace our await method and signal all method with wait and notify all method. And the functionality of this whole code remains the same. Same thing for the take method. Replace the locks with synchronized keyword. Replace the conditions with objects of any type. And replace the await and signal all methods with wait and notify all. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.